And the fact that my daughter is in my kitchen being problematic because she's got her phone on and she's wanting to make food like it's not the middle of the night. Why is she not in the bed? Why is she acting like, why, when do you talk about sex, Shala? When do you talk about sex? She is dark as obsidian and as light and beautiful and bright as the sun, the salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could we be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The blood that doesn't need a blood. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Demi and Nikki, the original wireless woman, and welcome to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel, and if you're feeling a vibe, well, go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome, welcome back to the Sex in My 30s episode of The Wireless Woman. And we will dive into other wives' tales and all of the things I wish my mama had told me all about sex in my 30s. So you already know what time it is because you already know what we do. It is time to call the roll. And I need really all sexually active women of any age to the front of the class. It is time to read aloud. All right, well, welcome back. To all of my old school Wi-Fi's, my dial-ups, and welcome in to my new school 5G Wi-Fi's. In this episode, we are going to be talking about my sex life in my 30s and other wives' tales. But go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like this video, when you like it, well, I love it. So, also, make sure you subscribe to my channel and share this content. I can honestly say that I think turning 30 has to be one of the hardest birthdays for a woman. It is like the official stamp of being an old lady, an old maid, especially if you haven't accomplished certain life goals that you had by 30. I mean, mostly all women want to be married by 30 because of all these fictitious myths about how women are over the hill once they turn 30. But I came across this very interesting phenomenon in my 30s. And like, I don't know where moms be when it comes to us developing past teenagers when it comes to our sex life. You're just told as a woman, don't have sex, wait till you're married. And that's pretty much sex ed for a woman. But what I found was this interesting phenomenon. 30 sucked, 31 sucked more, 32 sucked the most. But when I hit 33, I started to notice that I had hit my optimus prime when it came to my sex life 
And it wasn't necessarily what would follow, but initially it was just more of a confidence. It was just more of like a, I know what I want, how I want it, and when I want it. It was owning, you know, the mom bod or whatever kind of bod you have at that time and some of those insecurities melting away. And what a lot of women don't realize is that what causes that is a surge in your testosterone. As women begin to age, as we get on the other side of 35, we begin to produce more testosterone than estrogen. A lot of younger women and girls can become very out of balance with their testosterone if they've been put on birth control at a young age. That's why we see a lot of hypersexuality with young girls. But when you're younger as a woman, like in your older teens and younger 20s, you really just don't have the mental, emotional, physical, and psychological security to really own your sexuality in that way. You know, so you may be sexual, but you're definitely not having your best sex at that point. And you're not exuding that sexual confidence that really allows you to own and initiate your own experiences. So I found between 33 and 35 that I really began to build a whole different type of sexual confidence. And baby, 35, that was kind of like something else. You sure look like a master to me. And you know what I find really interesting is when you hear certain content creators who shall not be named because why gas that trash up, talk about women who are under 35, they give you this sense that those women have more value than women who are over 35. However, what I have found in my dating experience is that after about 35, the value of a woman begins to increase, kind of like buying a house. At a certain point, once you put enough equity into that house, it becomes a bank account. You know, it becomes this awesome savings account for the future. It's like, it's almost better than a life insurance policy in some ways. But when it comes to men, once they hit that 35 year age, their, their value begins to depreciate kind of like a car, you know? It's got all this utility, but as your car gets older, it goes down in value. And this isn't to say that men aren't valuable. I'm going somewhere with this. Just follow me. It's just to say that the way we look at what is being contributed to a relationship prior to 35 is a little bit different after 35. I just turned 40 last year, and I can honestly say that 35, 6, 7, and 8 were really these super awesome years of just sexual exploration. I would encourage any man or woman who can marry by 35 to do that because it's just kind of like nothing worse than being in your sexual optimus prime ladies and not have you know, that steady, stable partnership in a man, because it really is such a beautiful time to be able to explore your sexuality without being a city girl. Let's be honest. The city girls are not these 20 year old girls. They might be having a lot of sex, but they are not enjoying it like we do. Let's just be honest. You know, and once I passed a certain threshold in my 30s, I actually began to date a little bit younger because, as I said, people don't really want to get honest about this. But once you start dating men of a certain age and you begin to get older and you keep dating older and older, well, women that are 35 plus have the hormonal structure of a 19-year-old <laughs> pubescent boy. Like 35 is really 
the puberty age almost for women when it comes to where their testosterone levels are. Their body is really beginning to shoot out testosterone that puts them in the game, okay? Whereas men are beginning to watch their testosterone levels drop off sharply in their 40s and 50s. And this actually creates a really interesting relationship dynamic as well, because you'll notice that men begin to be made up a lot more like women in their 40s and 45. They get softer, they get the breast, they become emotional. And it is the rise in their estrogen that's literally causing men to be hormonally made up more like a woman would be. That's why, I mean, we go through all this transgender stuff, but if men would kind of just give it a few years, you'll be a woman anyway. And by the end of life, women are really much more equipped because of the levels of testosterone that they have in their hormonal system to actually take care of their men in older age. You know, the two of you over a lifetime together are going to eventually be hormonally pretty much the same. Men lose their vigor and libido and aggressiveness over time. And women actually will become more aggressive over time. That's why you have these men that really don't particularly want an older woman. And they call you aggressive and bossy and assertive, but it's your hormones. Like some things are nurture, but some things are nature. You know, most of us were raised by women that were a little bit more aggressive in their demeanor. And a lot of that has to do with the hormonal management of a woman. A 40-year-old woman is going to naturally be more aggressive than a 40-year-old man. But if you all have balance in your relationship, you will grow together. As a woman grows in her wisdom and her assertiveness and her ability to lead her family and to be a strong counterpart, this is what we're talking about when we talk about the equal yoke. Because you have to remember from an agricultural standpoint what I've said in my Black Divorce video about how the equal yoke is a stronger, younger ox. Women tend to get stronger and younger as they age. And then the older wiser ox are yoked together. Men tend to become softer, more temperate, and very, very wise in their understanding as they get older. And these two things begin to continue to work together. When you're younger, he's the stronger, <laughs> younger ox. And then when you guys get older, the woman takes the lead. This is the natural balance of things to keep you both able to evenly exercise power so that no one is the head of anyone else so that the woman who's taken from the rib always has equal standing with her men. We're made to be interdependent, not codependent. Because I promise you men, there's going to come a time when you're not going to be the stronger partner. And you're going to have to be able to trust your woman's leadership and guidance that she's followed you in the past long enough that when it comes her turn to make those decisions about final expenses and like I said the four for four like I said in the marriage box you're going to give her four she's going to give you four and you have to have learned enough from each other that by the time she reaches her four years of Optimus Prime you trust her that you guys have used all these 30s years to, de to develop not just sexual, but emotional intimacy with each other. I think that you miss something when you're waiting until you got an old, decrepit, gnawed, crusty set of balls to settle down. You know, because... Forty and fifty-year-old women... They're just not the same 20, 25, 30, 35 year old women. They're hormonally not the same. And I don't think it's a bad thing at all, ladies. 
use your thirties to really, really go off, set it off. If someone had told me what happens in your forties, which I'm not into my forties yet. I'm hoping that like 40 will turn over like 30 did and like maybe 42 rocks. I don't know. I will keep you posted though. As, as I'm adapting in my knowledge, I am committed to sharing what I experience, see, and know. But I do want to encourage Black singles to really use 30s as being this confidence-building time. It's not looking at it as your old age or else you're really going to miss something. I have told so many women, your 30s, like you come into yourself. Don't look at that as being old. And y'all 20-year-old women, don't look at these 30-year-old women like they ain't got it going on because they know some stuff you don't. No, baby, they on a whole nother level. I'm on a new 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 level. They on a whole nother level. Like, that's when you level up. That's when you get your Megazord. Like, like if y'all used to watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers back in the day, okay, nobody but me. All right. But my point is, that's when you get your Zord right there. You know, and like I said, I just put a toe in 40, so I can't tell you too much about this one, but I can say enjoy 30, 37, 38, 39, and baby, you are not married till you marry. You are single until you marry. You know, make sure you really take that time to explore who you are and what you want, because as you're getting this supply of testosterone you're going to really be empowered and endowed with the ability the sharpness the keenness of mind to be able to you know them emotions gonna get cut off baby all that love you was looking for in your 20s baby when you hit your 30s it's like what can you do for me lately mm -mm -mm -mm. Ooh, yeah it's over you about that business you about that life that's why I got some 32-year-old guy friends that I didn't told them, like, listen, just duck, duck, goose, pick you one at this point. Because once you get a hold of a woman, it's like buying a house in a seller's market and getting it for a good price. It's just going to continue to increase in value. And ladies, you have to see yourself that way as a commodity. Anybody who's telling you at 35 that you are over a hill, baby, is under a rock, boo. I mean, sex in my 30s was a, was a squid game. Okay, it was really just so much more about me. I became so much more selfish and self-centered. I received so much more pleasure. I became so much more comfortable in my skin. And every woman deserves to be able to shed that 20-year-old skin in your 30s and really just stretch yourself. Now, when I say stretch yourself, I don't mean be a hoe. I don't mean city girl, summer, winter, fall. I mean really begin to have purpose for how you use your body really begin to explore and expound on what intimacy is between you and the partnerships that you choose choose partnerships that are nurturing that give you that space and that room to really explore this new 19 year old body that you got you know, these new 19-year-old hormones, that person that really makes you feel safe to have a safe word. This is what this time is for in your life. And I will say that I got some 50-year-old friends that say it gets better. So I'm making this episode to be an encouragement to women who are in their early 30s, moving into their mid-30s to say, stretch yourself. In your career, in your love life as a parent, you know, you have so much more capacity. You're going to see your capacity really begin to double up and level up as you reach the other side of 35. So get ready for that. Get prepared for it. Look forward to it. Take it easy on yourself. 
rest in that femininity that you got left, you know, really learn how to wield it so that you can keep it in your 40s and not move into a very aggressive managed space because you didn't really prepare for what was going to happen to you hormonally. So as always, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman. That's all for this episode. Make sure you meet me in the comments. For now, class is dismissed. See you in the next episode.